Sorry to keep you waiting. I think we're running late. Right, okay, on our way. I've been ranting on for ages about how range anxiety in countries like the UK or the Netherlands is a bit of a red herring. In the, and, and it's a costly red herring because it causes, causes people to have bigger batteries than they need, which makes the cars heavier and more expensive than they need to be, and so on. But the range thing in America, I see why that's an issue, because you've got, well, first of all, you've got 110 volts at home. Yep. You have extremes of cold sometimes. Yep. And, um, heat. And, and extremes of heat, which might mess with the range. But all, you have no train alternative for a lot of journeys. You know, so it's quite common for people to live 500 miles from their parents. And vast interstates. And, and yeah. huge interstates where if there's one charger out of out of action, you're stuck in a kind of, you know, truck stop outside Boise, Idaho. <laughs> and, you know, a serial killer's just escaped from the local penitentiary and it's dark. That's slightly different from kind of stopping in Borton on the water, having a pot of tea. <laughs> have you heard about Google Maps introducing the eco-routing feature? have it in the US. Um, it's coming to the UK this year. By default, it'll give a more ecological and fuel efficient route. And then you have to pick, no, I want the quicker route. I think it's going to cause a nice conversation or trigger a nice thought about which, what, how much people are willing to add a bit of journey time to save a bit of, save a bit of fuel. Because normally you wouldn't even think about that, would you? You wouldn't think which journey is going to be. I don't be. think so, do, yeah. You might think about which car should I go in, but you wouldn't think about which route should I take. One of the things that sort of irks me from the behavioural point of view is everybody quotes charge time from naught to 80% or naught yeah. to 100%, which in reality is something you'd never do. You have this incredible performance, which I will probably demonstrate at some point, but you drive like a Quaker. <laughs> it's really strange. It's like you're almost sort of spreading peace and love to all the other road users, partly because when you have to slow down or stop, you don't feel you've been robbed of your kinetic energy. Mm. So you don't feel that sense of resentment, which is, God, it took me bloody, you know, it took me two minutes to get up to this speed, and I've lost it all. Yeah. I've currently got this on active mode, so as you see, when I stop here, actually didn't do it there, but it will do, it'll say 100% of energy recovered. So it actually gives you live stats on... On your regenerative On braking. your regenerative braking, yeah. That's to your point about gamification, isn't it? It becomes a little challenge. It does. And you See actually how many additional miles yeah. of EV range you can top up along your journey. Well, I think Rory will talk about this at any level of marketing, that it's where you direct somebody's attention that we're interested in the thing that we're pointed towards. And if you're always pointed towards go faster or shorter journey times, but there's other things you can point people's attention to. That... And, and the emotion of it, I think. The feet, like going back to your point, Rory, about you know driving an EV and 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 having having that feeling like you are doing something good and that you're kind of giving back and you're doing your part as a pride point almost, right? Yes, I mean, I'll be absolutely candid. I don't think I bought the car primarily for environmental reasons, but it's one of those things where actually your attitude follows your behavior. Right. I've become more and more conscious of, I think, I think if you offered me a free Bentley now, I would feel slightly uncomfortable driving mm. around in it. That's uh, you really know, interesting. Which is slightly odd. It would just feel sort of slightly, it wouldn't feel very right. zen. Yeah. Having had this experience of, what, 6,800 miles driving with zero emissions, I'd feel kind of a bit yuck. A bit guilty, Yeah. maybe. What, but, was, what was your main driver then? Uh, my main, beforehand, uh, I had a 5-litre Jaguar <laughs> a V8. Uh, so I have actually. Oh, so you're just making up for it. I, I'm basically. You're absolutely right. I, I'm still. You're in I'll have to drive about seventy thousand miles before I've undone the you're damage. Paying for it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was interesting. You were talking about the quietness of, of the car, and you know when we we're in the pandemic and we were all locked down and everything was so peaceful, wasn't it? it you know, you'd, you'd go out, there'd be no cars on the road, and I wonder if that's really changed how people feel about the noise of traffic. Definitely, yeah. definitely changed it for me. Well, I've, in the past, I've not bought uh, flats and houses because of pollution and noise fears. Mm. Apparently, the behavioural science tip is you should never buy a house near a junction. Right. Because although you can, your brain can get used to constant traffic, things like, you know, constant braking, 
the occasional accident to cars accelerating and stopping, you you never completely sleep that if you live sense. near a junction. Yeah. But there, there were several places in London I didn't buy because they were too close to the West Way. And it occurred to me that in 20 years' time, nothing to worry about. Well, tell me about this, because this has a, a, what's called sound screen, and the windscreen is apparently noise reducing. Yeah, I think we. I mean, uh, I think a lot of manufacturers have the similar technology where we can layer in, uh, you know, specific types of glass technology to, to reduce noise. And then you also have the very clever, you know, sort of speaker systems which can emit anti uh, noise, a bit like noise cancelling headphone wow. technology, uh, so that you can. Uh, uh, it sort of drowns out a lot of those those noises that, that are familiar to us on, on motorway, tyre noise, other other vehicles, etc. I think one thing you will find with electric cars, with given the general fact that tyre noise is the and, and, and suspension noise is the main irritation, you will get more campaigning for better road surfaces. Mm. Yeah. I mean, interestingly, Pete, you'll you'll know this already that the original campaigns for better road surfaces were driven as much by cyclists as by motorists. Well, yeah, it, uh, it was the cyclists that wanted tar to tarmac and asphalt the roads first, which you can imagine, this is 100 years ago, and then the motor vehicle came along. And, uh, of course, yeah, another thing to show the roads have always been shared with, it's not the car that's as dominant, but the bike, the lorry, the courier. That reminds me of the Domino's campaign that was so great a few years ago where they actually they were going around filling potholes with um, with this Domino's truck uh, and leaving the Domino logo on there because they were they were saying that all these mm -hmm. potholes in poor road conditions were leading to pizzas uh, uh, sort of turning upside down upon delivery of people's <laughs> houses. So they took it upon themselves to help repair repair roads. I always have this set on one pedal driving where effectively, if you take your foot off the accelerator, the car brake, it doesn't brake, it regenerates uh, using the motors. Yeah, and that's a, that's a strange thing to get used it's to. Very it? strange, yeah. It's very <laughs> strange to get used to. It's like a dodgem, isn't it, yeah. on the road? Yeah. yeah, but actually, having got used to it, I accidentally turned it off a few weeks ago and found it very weird driving in the old way, where you naturally coast when you take your foot off the accelerator. And, that, and I live in Milton Keynes, so we have lots of roundabouts. So oh, first of, of all, when you're getting used to that acceleration and then when you, you take your foot off, it does take a little bit of getting used to. I think we confidence as well, yeah. you know, when you're pulling out a roundabout, if, particularly if it's really busy, but you know that your, your car will just pull off really swiftly. Good time for a bio break and a cup of coffee uh, or any other multitasking you want to do. Well, we have a quick chill. We're running a bit late, as expected. Not to worry, wagons roll. Really interesting thing going on with brands as well with electric vehicles, isn't there? I don't know if you've noticed where the, the brand snobbery has almost disappeared. Yeah. And people are just looking at the cars oh, for right. what they offer, and that you know they, they might look at a Ford, they might look at a Skoda, they might look the at Hyundai, an Audi. The, yeah. You know, and, and, and they're all kind of um, jumbled up. That's consideration right. set, which is really interesting. Well, you know, I suppose I went about 80% of uh, people at the moment come out of those traditional uh, kind of so-called luxury brands uh, into, uh, into our, our So well, This is exactly it, because on the Mackey Forum, um, there's a UK section of the Mackey Forum online, and uh, there's a surprising number of ex-Jag drivers like me. And, All you know, trying to make up for uh, Exactly, we're years trying to compensate. Abuse. We've definitely seen it in Skoda, people yeah. coming out of all sorts of cars that you wouldn't originally have anticipated to be Skoda mm. driver. Ooh. Oh! <laughs> Sorry. Um, but here, it makes, it makes, little, yeah, skeuomorphic, yeah, yeah. It makes little skeuomorphic V8 noise, you yeah. see. And you get that same feeling. I can see Rory's grin. Already. Sorry, yeah, exactly. <laughs> His childish, childish. childish grin. One of your vertebrae near your neck. <laughs> That should be what it's about as well, though. It's not just about a practical A to B. It should be fun. Are you sure you know where we're going? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly confident. The sat nav seems comfortable. How are we doing for time? Mm, touch and go. So before you made the decision, Rory, did you think everything through, all of the, how you're going to charge it, answer any range concerns? Well, I, I must admit, I thought that not having a home charger would be more problematic than it's turned out to be in the event 
it's really not been an issue at all. The second thing I think is important is that I was able to try this car for four days while still keeping my existing internal combustion engine car. And I think one of the secrets to selling electric cars is to allow people to try them out uh, while they're still keeping their parallel running, you call it, in IT. Because I think asking people to sacrifice their conventional car on the same day they take delivery of an electric car, there's quite a lot of sort of loss aversion and fear going on at that moment. Whereas what I suspect would happen is if people had both alongside each other, they'd feel reassured by the continued presence of their petrol car, experiment enough with the electric car to solve all the problems for themselves, and then they'd pretty quickly find out that they were driving the electric car five times more often than the petrol car. Until there's like a cultural tipping point yeah. where people are just assuming that because there's so many people driving an electric car that actually it's mine, and I can trust the rest of society that helped me make that decision. Okay, so it looks like we're here. The world's premier festival of behavioural science. Oh, brilliant. Amazing. Oh, you can't wait. How exciting can this be? Yes, good job, Wonderful. Rory. Thank there you. We are. Thank you very much. Out we hop. Hello. Welcome to Virtual Nudge Stop. <laughs>